Hello, how's it going? I'm Sarami, and um, I'm really excited to be here. So let's see, we are working on this sew along, and my, my titles are a little confusing, so I'm, I'm sorry, because it, it is kind of the third stream of the sew along. Um, if you don't count that first one we did where we talked about how to print the pattern back in December. But um, it's only our second stream sewing them because we're taking it nice and easy. And a few of you have finished and they look amazing. Hi, Lisa. I think Michelle might be here too. We were already chatting. She's already got me on a task. Hi, Nancy. How's it going? What are you guys doing today? <laughs> are you guys sewing? Hi, Christy. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. <laughs> I, I love that emote, actually. I think it's very expressive. <laughs> so, um, oh, my orange sweater matches my foxes. I love it. I wasn't going to wear this sweater today. I was going to put this red one on that I really love. And um, I found a new moth hole. Okay, I, I'm really over this. I've never had moth issues till I moved here. It's driving me nuts. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it's still there. Okay, well, um, then I guess my secret is out um, and, which, and which pants. Hi, Malin, that I struggle with. You did? Nice, Christy. Yay! And I love that you guys are using the hashtag so I can see them. I know I'm really bad at checking it, though. Oh, nice, Nancy. That sounds really good, actually. I, can, I got the puppy back to sleep this morning after he got up this morning. I was so excited. But then it almost made me late because I was like, oh, he's asleep. I don't want to get up because as soon as he's up, it's just like he's so busy and um, it's hard to get ready and be productive in the morning. And nobody else is home right now. So <laughs> but he, he's awesome. I mean, he, he's pretty. Um, well, that's the problem, right? He is self-entertaining and um, he shouldn't be entertaining himself with some of the things he's doing. Besides the um, lack of potty training he is experiencing when it's raining. Ah! So, <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, my name is Sarah Mee, if anyone's new here. And um, this is where I sew something live. Hi, Ida, how's it going? And you guys can harass me or ask questions or say something nice. Hi, Kathleen. <laughs> that's awesome, Kathleen. <laughs> Yay, Melinda, that's so exciting. Yeah, Michelle, he's really cute. He's a little pug puppy. I'm learning a lot about pugs, and I didn't realize that people were so into pugs. Um, he's so strange looking. <laughs> I still can't get over how strange looking he is, but he's really cute. He's like a quintessential puppy, too. Like super squishy and lovable and snuggly and, and just so happy all the time, you know, and so exploratory and loves my cats. I mean, gosh, he's really cute. I'm not, I'm just proud of myself not spamming the internet with pictures of him because trust me, it's hard. It's all we text pictures of <laughs> to me and my family. I'm really glad to hear that, Melin. Your, all your guys' jeans look amazing on you. I'm so excited to wear mine. I just tried on my muslin again because I wanted to um, see where the pocket placement should be. So, um, so anyway, I was introducing myself just in case there's someone new here. So if you want to chat with us, you have to create what YouTube calls as a channel, which is the same thing as an account. That's all it is. Exactly, Nancy. <laughs> He could be my mascot once he's not eating everything off the floor here. <laughs> I have brought him in, and he just sleeps right here, right at my feet. So it is good. Like at the new place, I think it'll be better where I have hardwood floors. Or not hardwood floors, just like wipeable floors, if you get my drift. Um, and um, we love it when you chat with us. It's way more fun, and you can ask questions. You can, um, even if they're off topic or you need something demonstrated, if I can, I totally will, because that's what this is all about. Um, these are my, this is the front of my mountain views, pull on jeans, because that's what we're doing right now. We have a little casual sew along going on, our first one, and we decided to do the mountain view pull on pants or jeans. So there's no zipper fly. I don't know if you can see the schematic. There is a back yoke, back pockets, a back seam, um, front pockets, and a fake fly. So, and um, so yeah, this is a fake fly right here. There's a lot of pug hair in my life now. Um, just regular front pockets. And then um, the, we're gonna do the backs today. 
So like the last stream we did of these was like a little over an hour long, I think. These are really fast sew. I really recommend them. This is my first time sewing them though. And it feels like the fit is pretty good for most people. It only goes up to size 20, what she considers a size 20. So um, not a really big size range, but um, I think that this is one of the easier ones to alter. And we talk a lot about that in the first couple of streams about this. Yeah, I, oh, thanks, Nancy. That was a very quick and dirty stop motion video. <laughs> uh, um, I like to dabble in it. It's just fun, and it was totally what I shouldn't have been doing in the moment. And, of course, I just used the little pieces of, the little foxes from the fabric, so it made it really easy. I was really surprised how actually they looked animated, <laughs> you know? And that I realized, too, there's not a single fox pointing that direction. Hi, Fiona. Fast for you. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> So, um, so let's get to this. And then um, let me talk to talk about Michelle's issue. So she has got the Persephone pants and that's what she is doing as her sew along because we're not strict here. And I have never made the Persephone pants and now my secret is out that I am not the biggest fan of the fit of these pants on people. I'm really, really sorry. They are super, super popular. And maybe it's a, a trend thing on the way things fit that, um, it's just I'm missing, so I will totally admit that because I keep trying to like them. Hi, Cassandra. Welcome. And um, I, uh, but I do not like the um, the the front rise and the the that that whole fitting area right there. There's those wrinkles coming off that on almost every person I see is so distracting for me. So, and I have a friend that really loves them and really wants to make a pair, but. Until this morning, I it's the wedge look very in vogue. Are you are you teasing me? Or are you are you is that true? <laughs> if that's true, then yeah, I'm missing the boat on that one, and I'm glad to sayonara. <laughs> um, yeah, I just don't like the way the front those those wrinkles are at the front rise juncture at the crotch and the inseam area, and like and the the fly is super super long. So, and some people it looks really stiff and it pushes down below the pants. Ah, it's true, really? Okay, so then it is a fad. So there you go. Uh, it's just not my cup of tea then. But the fact that you told me that there's no side seam on those pants explains so much to me. There's no side seam and they aren't um, cut in stretch fabric. So that makes sense now. Now I know why. Oh, everyone looks like that. Oh, okay. I, you know what, I probably don't look at the back view. I just am like, no, <laughs> I'm so, I'm just too old school. Just too old school, classic fashion trained, you know, and I really need to broaden my horizons and, you know, get on that bandwagon, I bet. Your waist is size smaller than your hips and I'm sure it's a, ooh. Yeah, and Michelle's having the opposite issue. So maybe, Malin, this trick will work for you too. Yeah, you know what, Christy, I think like if you're a gal who isn't really curvy, I think those pants are awesome because not everybody is curvy. Some gals are straight. Their waist and their hips are about the same measurement and um, that, that pair of pants would look absolutely fantastic on those gals. So I think like that's the thing is like not everybody is, their body type is like the perfect fit for every style, right? Hi, Carol. How's it going? And that's okay. I mean, you know, I've, I'm totally fine with that. Like I can't wear um, what most people call an empire waisted thing. I look pregnant no matter what I do. And I love that. I always say on pier. I'm, I, <laughs> that's how classically trained I am. I will say on pier instead of empire. But um, I, I can't wear those. I would really like to. I just look, thing, look better in like structured things, you know? And like really long and loose things just look really huge on me. So, so anyway, let's get to, to Michelle's issue. So <clears throat> if the pants are indeed one pattern piece with no side seam, this is roughly how they're going to look. I imagine the pattern piece is going to look and you need to um, make your waist bigger. So this is what I would do. I would cut down to the hemline. So let's say that the um, hemline where you fold for the hem is like right here. Okay. It's 
It's probably like one or one inch, one and a half inches. Yeah, it does. Okay. <clears throat> so then um, you're going to do that. You're going to cut down to that and then you're going to cut up to that point. You're going to leave it connected if you can. If it comes unconnected, it's not the end of the world. It happens. And then you're going to spread it apart like that. Just like that. I'm sorry it's a little bit um, overexposed. Let me see if I pull this away, if it'll help. Oh, I have it off. The, I have the auto exposure off. Hi, Kathleen. You made... Oh, the Mountain View Pride of Slice when I got Oh, awesome. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I mean, that happens, right? We're all so different. This is a really interesting, tricky area to fit, you know? Okay, so that's what I would do. And then um, who, who was just saying that you have the opposite fit issue? Is it um, Malin, right? Yeah, yeah. So then you would, Malin, you could do this. You could overlap it to make the waist a little smaller. Now, it's not to say that you can't, do this. You can, okay, so uh, Michelle needs, I think, three inches, right? So here is the deal. You can divide this three inches up. Hi, Rebecca. How's it going? Um, we're talking about a totally different pair of pants right now, Rebecca, because someone has a fit issue on a pair of pants that she's, she's making. Um, and um, so what I would do is I would evenly distribute this three inches for the most um, accurate way of dispersing that extra. Now, you might want to leave the dart in, but you don't have to. But see, if you do, if the dart has this like point like this, and you just leave off the dart, you're gonna have to blend this all together, make this a nice smooth line. I know that this does not look like the pattern because I've never seen it before, but just make sure that your waist, no matter what you do, here, here, and here, you just blend this line, and then you do it to a right angle right here. So don't leave your back waist like this. You're gonna have to compensate by going like this and making it square because remember this seam is going to sew to itself and you do not want it to look like this at the back you're going to trim it off anyway okay so that's my cautionary note about um, whatever you do um, and then so for three inches and you could conceivably do it in six places but only three because it's going to double when you cut it out again right so you have this one right here this one right here, and this one right here. And so what you can do is um, divide that three inches into six, which is what, like a half inch each place. So then you could do half inch here, spread this apart a half inch, and then move this whole, is the, is the fly built onto it like that, or is it a facing? Because um, if it, you, you know, you're gonna do the same thing here, but leave this the same leave this piece right here the same move it like just move this whole area like this so then it's like like that you know what i mean i hope that's not confusing um but what you could do is just do it in these two places or just here and try that out so you could do an inch and a half right here and the thing is you're going to get more through your hips which you didn't want to get larger that's why I say like, maybe you do like three quarters and then three eighths and three eighths. All right, so yeah, so Michelle, just make sure that you try not to alter this line right here where the facing, you can just, what you can do is you can just cut in here, pick it up, move it over and then blend it in. Just leave this whole area as, sim as, as you know, as original as possible, okay? So, um, that's what I would do because remember like remember that if there's a seam that's two places where you're adding so if you're adding a half inch right here that's actually an inch because you're adding it to the left back and a half inch to the right back so you've already got an inch right so that's the good news I mean the bad news about that is when people don't use the correct seam allowance and I'm obviously really guilty of this I do it all the time on here because I'm always switching between lots of seam allowances because if you're an eighth of an inch off here and here and there's a side seam and you're on that side seam and that seam. I'm a half inch off on one side of my pants and a half inch off on the other side. It's a whole inch, right? Because it's one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, and then double it, right? So um, that's why seam allowance is so important. And um, when you add or subtract for fit, I just really like it to be evenly distributed because I feel like the fit's a little better. And it's not so drastic in one spot. Also, 
you know, these are pants, so it's a bifurcated pattern. So you have this area and this area, two separate areas, right? This part, the top half is going around your upper torso or your lower torso, and the leg is going around just your leg, right? So you kind of don't want to affect the fit through here that much. So that's why I say I would add maybe like, maybe see what three quarters is and see if you're going to be okay with, like by the time it gets down to your hip right here, that might only be you know, three eighths of an inch that it's adding to your hip. You're gonna do a muslin? Oh, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> she was like, don't say muslin, don't say muslin at the beginning of the stream. <laughs> of course I'm gonna say muslin. So, all right, so that's the Persephone pant or any kind of pant. This literally is a legging pattern. Like that's what a lot of legging patterns look like. That's why when you said that, I was like, what? There's no side seam? So I'm really sorry, I'm not trying to offend any pattern lovers of the Persephone out there, but um, I just am not, <laughs> just not a big fan of the way they fit. All right, so let's get to my pads. Everybody's got mountain views, but me. Oh, and then um, after the stream, after I do uh, the mountain views today, I'm gonna stop streaming and I'm gonna start again and I'm gonna do a version of the Thea Rochelle again. I don't know what happened to my muslin. Like, I've looked everywhere for it and I, I cannot find it. I, at least, thank goodness I tried it on and I remember, um, yeah, exactly, Lisa, exactly. <laughs> I think that's why those um, legs are so stovepipe too because you can't taper it just at the inseam. You have to usually taper it um, both places. And if you really wanna taper your pants, you can do the opposite, cut up, through the side seam to the waist and overlap the hem. So if you if the top's fine for you, just a just a note. Um, so I'm gonna do this after the stream and we'll start a whole nother stream so you can stay if you like. Um, I'll try and get it back going pretty quickly. And I am breaking some rules on that. I'm putting knit sleeves on it and um, with a woven front and back with a little cutaway pocket. It's gonna be really cute, making up for Valentine's because I'm always at this show coming up at Valentine's Day every year. And um, I don't really celebrate it. I'm the worst, I'm like so not sentimental. It's awful. My husband is the sweetest, sweetest guy. He's even sent me flowers up there and I didn't even get them. Like he's amazing. And um, I am like, oh, it's Valentine's Day. I'm awful, same with my anniversary <laughs> so oh pleated fabric trousers that sounds so cute yeah using a pan pattern <laughs> yeah and your daughter if she's young she probably doesn't have a whole lot of um fit issues quite yet except maybe in height or something like that you know it's not like she's gotten to that really curvy stage where it gets just really harder much harder you know kids clothes are so great that way they are little potatoes when they're babies, you know? So they're awkward to fit, don't get me wrong. They're just a totally different thing. So anyway, let's do it. Alrighty. So I'm gonna put my backs together and do my pockets at the end. So yeah, no, pretty straight, exactly. Here we go. <laughs> I know, I, my mom is sentimental too, and I think my sister is too. And, um, I'm just like, oh, I haven't used that in a year. I'm gonna get rid of it. It's terrible. It's terrible. I'm working on it. I really am. Like when the whole Marie Kondo thing came out, I was like, oh shoot, I invented this. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the pleat. Are you the one doing the pleats? Wait, I thought it was Malin saying doing pleats. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, the gathered waist sometimes does that. I, I that's the only problem with gathered waist. Um, what pants I'm wearing right now have gathered but the front of the waistband for like just this much is flat and then all the gathers on the side kind of helps, you know? Yeah, I'm dressing helps. Oh, she is all grown up then. Oh, I know, my daughter just turned 16. She's got her license two weeks ago. <laughs> it's actually awesome. She's just loving it. It's really cool. She even surprised me with a little treat yesterday. <laughs> you don't care about the too. I know, I don't get it. I mean, I'll eat some of the treats. Don't get me wrong. Like, I have a huge sweet tooth. <laughs> My friend Brooke's like, oh, dang. She was the one who wrote, you, you're up in the ante. Because she and I share a really big booth at that show. We, we each take one and a half booths. We split three together. Because the booths are really awkwardly uh, 
shaved. And, um, you know, we're always there. We're, we're each other's Valentines when we're there. And, we, you know, it's like we all want to, like, go out to dinner after vending all day. It's a really long show day. And then we have to contend with Valentine's traffic. And we're like, oh, shoot. That's right. The rest of the world's celebrating Valentine's Day. Is this a... Uh, I, I kind of lost my notches when I put this uh, together, <laughs> when I uh, did the surging. Pretty sure that's how, it, right, 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 right? Okay, just making sure I'm putting the right one. Did the right one. I, you know, I didn't really notice how, like, there's like not much shape right there. Is that true? This isn't the sightseeing, right? But if I were to overlap this, that looks like the pocket. It's not this, that would be too, yeah, okay. Oh, I know, Lisa. Nine is awesome, dang. Okay, half inch seams, right? <laughs> so I'm sewing this with navy together. I already pre-surged. There's a slight dart at the waist right here. Um, we did do a tutorial on how to remove this back seam if you want. Uh, I decided to leave it in. After seeing everybody's finished jeans, I was like, those look so saucy. I really like it. <laughs> yeah, right? You remove your back seam. Oh, interesting. Oh, the back leg seam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, that's what we were talking about. It, it would be it wouldn't be hard to do it, and I, you know, I just decided like it's really. Um, I'm gonna top stitch it in um, matching thread like Christy suggested, and I feel like that's a really great compromise. And um, that way, I'm not sewing them differently than how anybody might. You just like <laughs> oh, nice, Carol. Yeah, I feel like these are, um, I think because of the stretch, because you know you need to have 20% stretch, or what is it, 20 or 30% stretch, and um, that really does help some of the fit issues. I'm, I increased my back rise up about an inch and a half, quite a bit. And when I tried them on today, I was like, yeah, I probably didn't need to do that much, but um, I'm fine with that. I, I, I kind of like that. I'm losing this pen here. I'm going to top stitch this seam right now while I have the blue on before I forget. I've been like switching thread color so much lately because when I did the um, prep for the Thea Rochelle, I have, you know, knit and gray. I have the pockets that are kind of a cream background. And then I have the um, body, which is in black. And then I cut out two different facings because I'm not sure which route I'm going to go. I even thought about like making the facing knit on the front and then cover stitching, but um, I actually don't think I need to do that because because the um, the uh, well, I don't think I need to do that because you just pull it over your head. There's no stretch happening, so I'm deciding to be the guinea pig on this. Yeah, see, it kind of blends, right? Oh, is that bright enough for you guys? I can make it brighter, but you know how it gets. It gets really bright. If I move that light closer, does that help? Makes me look brighter, huh? <laughs> oh, that's a good point, Lisa. It could be uncomfortable, you're right. All right, I'm gonna be finishing these and then basically putting them in my suitcase and wearing them at the show for the first time. <laughs> but I'm really glad I'll have a new pair of pants, you know? That's always good. Oh God, they touched the floor. The floor at my office is like hot lava. Don't touch the floor with anything. I can't wait to have a, sleep a sweepable floor. It's gonna drastically improve the quality of my life. I would sweep every day if I um, had a sweepable floor. I actually do use a broom and sweep the carpet sometimes and just kind of get the big, but it doesn't get the little pieces that stick to everything, right? I still find sequins from when this time Rayanne did some sewing for a friend. 
and there were these little tiny sequins all over the fabric. And I was out of town and I was like, she was like, yeah, I realized after I did this, this was, this was probably a band fabric in the shop, huh? <laughs> sequins are a little easier though. But you know how I feel about like anything with a heavy pile, like fake fur or burlap. I just don't allow, I don't allow it across the front door. Oh, really, Malin? Ooh, that's good to know. When do I officially move into the office? Okay, well, uh, technically, it's mine right now. I don't have keys to it, but it's it's kind of been a casual thing. Um, and they're doing a bunch of work to it. They're, they, it wasn't really rented out before me. Like, it was a business a long time ago for his wife. And then she's closed her business, and it's just been sitting there. And so because I'm not, you know, his wife or family, he is making it more autonomous. And so he put in a new floor and he's going to paint it and uh, you know, he had to remove some stuff, you know, stuff like that. So I said, you know, you can put the move-in date in March. You can put it in February. I'm just going to have to pay in two places. And that's kind of what I'm doing. Oops. And so I'm not worried about it until after the shows to move in. And even then, I still need, I, want, I don't really want to move everything over there. I kind of want to get rid of some of it. Bye, Rebecca. Have fun. Oh, it's wet out there. Be careful. It was pouring down rain. And so, you know, the puppy's like, uh, no thanks. He's like, the, the floor inside the house seems great. I don't know why we even go outside. I mean, I guess if I were three inches off the ground, I would probably feel the same way, you know? I don't really blame him too much. One raindrop on something that small is really big, <laughs> you know, as opposed to on me. So yeah, I think like, I, I probably should just come up with a timeline for myself. Why am I top stitching on this side? Yeah, it's supposed to be on that side, right? Is that what I did? Yeah, I wanted it on this side. Oh man, do I take it out? Do I take it out? This probably wouldn't bug me, but um, you know, I've got to take something out today. Otherwise, how are you guys going to start your drinking game, right? <laughs> oh, hello, Eliza. How's it going? Yeah, you know, I feel the same way about sock seams. I love hand knit everything, but um, hand knit socks, are they're just not my favorite. Probably because I wear clogs, and the clogs are so um, hard that I can feel every, very sti every stitch. So I, I do like really small gauge <laughs> knitting yarn for my socks. And I like knitting socks. They're, they're really fast, you know. But um, sweaters are kind of my thing. I just really like knitting clothes, I guess. Take a shot. There's the reverse. <laughs> exactly. You guys. Getting me banned on YouTube already. <sighs> I'm just, you know, trying to talk and sew at the same time. Oh, this is so hard to take out, though. I could take a chance and do it this way. I don't recommend it. But I can't see. I can't see the stitches. So let's see. Moving in. Okay, so I get back probably, I think, the... Let's see, the show is the 17th. And I start driving home on the 20th, I think, or 21st takes me two days to drive home. Um, I would love to say I'd be back at work and at it, but I kind of know exactly, Michelle. That's why you get other people to knit them, right? And then um, I really need to finish selling some stuff at Chicken Boots, and I'm going to put a cutoff date for that. And then the materials that I have sitting here too. Maybe a machine. So I hope I'm actually moving there around the 15th of March. And that I'm all set up and ready to go in April, but I'll try and stream still. It just may be like a bare bones setup. <laughs> Maybe we could do a test stream in the new place. Like they got better internet for me and everything. It sounds amazing by the way, the internet. 
My internet's really good here. So I was like, oh yeah, this is a deal breaker. I can't go, I can't go back. I have to have a certain amount of upload, which a lot of people aren't tip, uh, typically concerned with with their internet because they're not uploading data they're just downloading it and streaming but i am uploading a stream so i need it to be pretty high if you weren't watching me i would go yeah i'll do a little more super dangerous ho oh, hum i never take out top stitching like this by the way but i can't see it and I, I don't want to do it on this side because I'm afraid I'll snag a thread. You ready for your stitching? <laughs> oh, Michelle, you just keep pushing for that because I'm ready for it too. Did you, I don't know if you know Miriam Felton, uh, Michelle. What exactly is Twitch? It is another streaming platform primarily occupied by gamers. Um, they love to broadcast their gameplay and then people chat and like cheer them on or call them trash, you know, because there's lots of toxic people over there or um, ask them how to do things or just hang out kind of like you guys are here. Um, but there is starting to be a larger crafting community on there. I just knew that it probably wasn't the best platform to start on because most people have heard of YouTube and most people have not heard of Twitch. So... Uh, but anyway, Miriam Felton, um, she is a knitter and knitting designer, and she does all kinds. She's really crafty. She started a Twitch channel, and I think it is called Mim is Making. You want me to mod you? <laughs> I might someday, Michelle. Be careful. I don't think there's a mod here today, so, you know, you never know. All right. Home stretch. Look at that. Ooh, I don't like getting near my surging. I don't want to pop the surging. All right, this is when that little, have you seen that tool that has the, it looks like an eraser on the end to get your stitches out? I have one somewhere. I never use it. But this would be a good use for it because the threads are so hard to see. It works really good. Um, let me see if I have it. <clears throat> Yeah, here it is. It's dusty. Oh, this is called a seam fix. Okay, so you just do this. Like this. And it kind of grabs these little tiny threads. I never use it, but see all the thread I got there? I really like to get rid of all my threads now because... um. I don't want to inadvertently immortalize them on my project or wear them around. And so I have a lot more threads on this side, but they're, it's a longer strand. Doesn't look like I got all the dye out, does it? The lower looper on your serger, oh, the, lo the looper, not the looper thread, ooh. Oh, tape, that's a good idea. Like the kind that, um, my mom's a retired nurse. Um, is it the kind that you like put on skin? Like that kind of tape? That's a good idea, actually. I mean, I use it for lint and stuff and pug hair. All right, I'm back in action. Let's not do it again. I'm excited about the new studio though, you guys. It's gonna be really cool. I don't have to have a whole factory there or, um, you know, all the materials. So I have a lot of space there. She does, Kathleen? Oh. We should check her out. What kinds of things does she do? Does she do cosplay and stuff like that? I do see a lot of cosplay sewers on there. But like I, I've watched a few and they're like on the floor, in their bedroom. You're looking at their elbow because the camera's right there. I think my, my presser foot pressure is a little bit too much for this stretch. Oh, wow, Michelle, that's a bummer. Silk med medical tape, ooh. 
Okay. I'm just looking up the chat. Silk medical tape. I'm gonna ask my mom about that. All right, back in business to these yolks. The light so the light's so close. I'm like, <laughs> I can't see. Yes, absolutely, Kathleen. Oh, she's an artist. Yeah, there's a lot of artists on there doing their um, like process of their art and stuff. Very cool. I actually know some um, gamer kids that watch artists. Okay, that's that yoke. I know about that pin. Don't worry. I'm going to move it. I probably don't need to. I have no time to watch streams lately. I mean, I'm, I'm really, I'm sewing a lot, but I've been listening to more audiobooks again. I'm a really big audiobook fan. And last year I didn't get as many listened to. Um, we, I had a lot of bad luck <laughs> with uh, some of the books I picked. And Rhiannon and I used to l listen to them uh, together. But then when I moved my stream set up out in the other room, we couldn't hear the same book together. It was just really awkward. So she would listen to her thing and I would listen to mine. Okay, I'm going to use my uh, gold thread for that. So do I want to top stitch my yoke before I do the center back seam? Probably. Which means two thread changes. <laughs> oh, that's fine, Kathleen. You can, you can tell us. No, 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 it's fine. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of a thing. Like, there is etiquette in streamers' channels where they uh, don't allow promoting of other, of like, you know, like, it would be poor taste of me to go into someone else's channel and say, hey, watch me, I'm live on Saturdays or whatever. But um, I'm all about supporting other people, you know? I would really like to watch my friend, well, I don't really know Mira Felton, but um, I would really like to watch her on Twitch. My issue is that I have um, I have one, an account for my Twitch, my um, so-so, and then I have my own personal one, and I don't want any crossover because um, I just don't really want the gamer kids to find me over here if you get my drift, so. All right. So let's see here. Did you guys do orange thread here? I don't see that in the, um... oh no, she did that. Oh, it's that seam I've seen, okay. <clears throat> Yay, I like the orange thread. It's not really orange, it's more gold. Yeah, no, Kathleen, tell us her name. Yeah, that's awesome. I watch a lot of Twitch, I love it. Oh, I didn't know those were books. Right now, I'm listening to a um, youth fantasy book and um, white fragility. So uh, it's quite the mix <laughs> of genres. All right. And I'm also watching Grace and Frankie is really cute and oh uh what was the one of the one i'm watching oh the uh, americans I, I wanted to say the russians i was like that's not it <laughs> okay i'm gonna do my top stitching here and i'd like this to be straighter than i usually sew so um if you're gonna surge not everybody has a surger but if you're gonna surge i don't really recommend pre-surging like I have because this seam right here is bulkier than it needs to be. It would be flatter if I had just sewn this and then surged it once together. Just That's just my two cents. It's not a big deal, but I do think it would be a little nicer. I'm gonna do two rows. This is the yellow I picked, right guys? Ooh, it sounds like, um, Oh God, that got really wiggly right there. 
Whew. Okay, I don't think it's gonna bug me too much. Okay, there's one. Oh, and I, I started surging the waistband. I was like, no, I don't want that. That's not the right edge. <clears throat> so I stopped. I don't want to confuse myself. And this is going to get surged eventually. A lot of times when I sew here, I don't use my serger. Um, but I will on certain things. Because people have either. They don't or they do. And you can use a zigzag stitch in place of a serger. And I think that looks fine. I really do. I, I really like my things to, I, I waffle between making my things look store-bought and um, homemade. I think there's nothing wrong with homemade. There can be a little bit of a stigma with it, and um, I don't think there should be at all. Yeah, the Americans is awesome. I really like it. I mean, I was, I was, um, well, I graduated high school in 89. So I feel like um, you know, I don't want all the part poggers. I just saw that. I had to Google that, Michelle. That and Monka, Monka S, all those like that Twitch lingo. I was like, I don't know what those is. And I have yet to use any of it. <laughs> I'm not confident enough yet there. So um, I could do my pockets right now, but I think I'm going to do my back seam now just to get it out of the way. So I haven't, I still haven't really decided on my stitching, but I have an idea. And you guys have to be honest with me. I don't want you to be like, that's way too cute, you know? Because it's on my, you know, my booty, so. Ooh, gosh, that thread is so thick. I thought it came un, undone when I got to the tension disc. It got so much easier. All right, so back seam. These pants go together so quickly. They're really great that way. This is what I don't like about surging. I will admit, I don't have good solutions for that. Sometimes I'll pull it and lock it, but I don't, um, I didn't have that kind of uh, strand right there to do that with. Okay, I always put my pants, like, all my, my garment up on the table so it's not pulling on my needle. Oh, shoot, I hope I got these. They're okay. My shirt's going to be over it, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't ever want to say that's good enough because there's issues with that statement for me. But at the same time, have I looked at my store-bought pants and noticed that they're they're a little bit off too sometimes? I have, you know. But um, mostly, if you're using like a twin needle for your top stitching, you'd never have that issue. And I just can't use one on this machine. I would love to though. So when you get to that spot right here, line up your top stitching rather than your seam. It's um, visually a little, more pleasing. I'm scared to see how I did. <laughs> Art vibes. Wow, she streams. She's a full, really a full time streamer. That's really cool. I'm gonna check her out. Yeah, see, I'm a little off there. Maybe my top stitching will kind of hide that a little bit. So let's see. What way does my front go? Okay, so my front's going this way. I'm gonna put my back this way, which is what I wanted. That way I can stagger the crotch seam at the juncture so that it's not so um, thick. Art vibes, that's pretty easy to remember. There's really not a whole lot of thread on here. Hope I have another one. Well, not a lot can really fit, you know? It's so thick. It's not like yarn where <laughs> a heavier gauge yarn you need a little bit less to cover the area. You still need to cover the same amount. Oh no, 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 no. There we go. Ah, no. See this yarn is this thread is so thick it is like yarn. You see the ply? The ply got caught as I was trying to thread it through. 
So I have a heel lift on my machine. That's why I can lift and raise my presser foot with my foot. So you'll see a lot of upping and downing and snapping. That's what that is. Cause um, this machine, my old machine wasn't a heel lift. It was a knee lift. And um, I had that machine for, I had it for a really, really long time. I'm still getting used to a knee lift. It, the motor finally died on that machine. So I don't have the electronics anymore on it. It still works. It just doesn't have the fancy cutting and, and raising and lowering with the automatic stuff. So um, I had to set it aside. It's in the next room. And um, I'm still getting used to the heel lift, but my back issues are way better now that I'm not using a knee lift. Because I used a knee lift for so long, for so many hours a day, it definitely ended up giving me some issues in my hips. Most people won't ever experience that, so you don't have to worry about that if you're thinking about going one way or the other. I, I love the knee lift, it's great. This was just an extreme case. I sew six days a week. All right. Yeah, that's not that great, is it? it doesn't help that like the seams going like this, you know, like the thickness. So it really exacerbates that. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember when uh, Miriam is on. Um, she has a uh, three days a week or maybe two days a week. But I saw that her streams are on there. So I think that's relatively new in the last year on Twitch that you can actually save your streams kind of like you do on YouTube. That was the other reason I picked YouTube was that you couldn't do that at the time. My stream was on the floor. Why do I have two of these? Those are the pair I ruined last week. <laughs> okay. So my little pochetta which is not really a word. Um, I'm thinking about doing this on one pocket and then just like a little, you know, boing on this one. What do you guys think? I, I mean, just the outline. I should clarify. I'm not gonna embroider. If you are new here, you will quickly learn that um, I don't like hand sewing. Yeah, I know, I know. That's what they wanted to start the drinking game with was how often I say that, but just want to reiterate it. I don't like hand sewing. So um, I'm going to use my little choco liner, which I just really love. It doesn't come this way. I just, they just didn't have a white cartridge at the time. <laughs> so I bought a yellow cartridge for my white, <laughs> my white clover. Char that might mean my choco liner. So I just thought I'd do this. I cut out a few extra pockets and I thought, you know, I'll just try this and see what I think. And you guys are going to be honest with me, right? I didn't die cut it. I just um, took this. Where'd that little fox go? I took the leaping fox and I just enlarged him on the copy machine. It's a piece of paper. I am not art vibes. I can't, I can't really draw that well. All right. Not that I know if she draws. <laughs> Wrong channel. But I can trace like nobody's business. My little tail's going to get caught in the. What do you think? The color ones. No, those are, that's the fabric. That's the, uh, literally, I just cut them out. I just cut them off the fabric, that's all. See? It's just fabric. <laughs> that's all it is. And then like for the fox glove, when I did the stop motion, I cut 
I cut one, I cut like a, f let's see, one, two, three, four. I cut up five foxgloves. I cut off the top and then the top two and then the top three, the top four, the top five. And then I just took a picture of it growing. Yeah, so it's, I, like I said, it was quick and dirty. No, I'm not gonna applique it. Nope. They're just on there. See, <laughs> they're just falling off all over the place now. I'm not gonna put those on my pocket. I'm just gonna do a little outline on one pocket, I think. I thought about it, but I would have to, yeah. What You could do double-sided fusible. I actually know a little bit about applique because uh, I worked at a children's bedding company for a while. Um, you could do double-sided fusible and then a tight zigzag, like a buttonhole stitch uh, around the edge. That would be totally, that would work like a dream. Um, and yeah, you could use uh, like double-sided. The one I know of is called Wonder Under. And I think there's others as well. So yeah. All right, where should we put our stop, stop, start, start, stop. I'm gonna put it in his armpit right there. Remember when I did all those birds? You're gonna hear my, my presser foot go up and down a lot, sorry. Now you know why I didn't do it live on camera. <laughs> Although I, I was pretty quick on those birds. I got pretty good at um, doing it and I was doing it on top of the bird and so it didn't really matter, you know? So, it, it, not like this where I'm like literally tracing something. One stitch for your nose. I'm gonna like fill in his nose here. Just a little bit. Ah, no, no. Ah. Oh my gosh. Okay, I can't, I might have ruined it. <laughs> my chalk is rubbing off. Oh, I did. Like, um, I posted it in, um, oh, I don't know about that, you guys. Maybe I'll go over it. I posted it in, like, a Seamwork challenge of, what was it called? I can't remember now. Like, was it an outerwear challenge? I think it was an outerwear challenge. And I just, so oh, I made this recently, and, um, and then I got nominated for like a, a certain category, I think uh, creativity or original or something. There were some really amazing makes on there. And then, um, yeah, and they gave me a $50 gift card to the fabric store of my choice. And I picked Hearts Fabric, so. Okay, wait. There's like a little bit of foot definition here, right? Isn't it interesting my stitches look diagonal. I kind of like it. It's not technically correct. But I don't have the expertise to modify that. I'm going to ask my mechanic from Sacramento to come and uh, move my machines and set them up. Well, let's see. What are you guys writing here? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think it was for outerwear, Christy. <laughs> well, Carol, I think it looks better on camera. <laughs> In person, I'm like, eek, I'm really glad you, glad you guys can't see this. Okay, so I'm gonna come up to this. All right, let's get rid of this. I'm gonna like go over this a little bit and kind of hide the fact that it got off. I think that did the trick. And then where was my eyeball? Eyeball. Where's my fox? Why do I set things down? Here it is, okay. Right there. So 
Sorry, Fox. You served me well. All right, right there. I'm just going to make that hole a little bit obvious. You got good at the eyeballs on that bird's thing. I, I, wear, I wear that jacket all the time, which I'm really glad. I really love it. All right. Eh, it's okay. I don't want that right there. What do you guys think? Well, you know what, Carol? You just gotta try it. And if you don't like it, you don't have to use it. That's why I call I cut out all these extra pockets. Just in case. So what if I do that? That's on my butt, you guys. So be honest. And then here, maybe I go like. So this would be roughly um, like right here. Okay, like that. Okay. <laughs> Very boxy. <laughs> and then maybe he's kind of at the wrong angle for me to do too much of a boing, but maybe I could go like this boing or boing. And maybe I could do like a little hill right here. I almost did this and I was like, it kind of looks like a butt. Um, like that? What do you think? And then I'll embroider a butterfly. No. <laughs> okay, let's, let's attach him and then decide, hey, let go. Let me hem my pocket. So um, if you haven't gotten to this point of your pants yet, uh, be warned, the pockets are asymmetrical. I know, Nancy, That's I think that's exactly what I'm worried about. The thing is, if I really hate it, I can always take this pocket off and put on another one. It's the fox that jumped over the moon. I know, that's why I add a little moon in the, the stop motion with it going doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> So, um. So note that this pocket is asymmetrical. So if you were to fold it in half, like I would line it up down here at the bottom, it's so you can tell it is asymmetrical. And so this side goes towards the center back, the straighter side, and the um, more angled side goes towards the side seam. So what I did is I added myself a little notch because double notches to me always mean center back. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. That's you're reminding Christy that she has you put on the pockets after the pants are made. Okay, yeah. So I am doing this out of order. I, I fully recommend doing it this way. It's so much easier to put on a pocket on a flat um, pair of pants rather than something with, you know, trying to get inside. Inside. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's permanent, right? Okay. So um, I have to do this from the top because I don't have the bobbin thread on for this color. I only have it on navy blue because I could not do both. I don't think a home machine could either. I'd really like a nice straight line, please. Thank you. Two rows or one? I let, this looks like yarn. <laughs> The cow jumped over a moon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, much easier. Exactly. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to position these uh, upside down because that's how I'm going to start. Oh, I am not going to start upside down. I'm going to start sideways like this. I'm going to start uh, across the top and go down. Right? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do two rows, just so you guys know. I'm going to do two rows. So when I uh, mark my pockets, I always know that where the pin goes in was where the marking was. <laughs> um, and I, I'm going to raise them. I, my, my, I might raise it up a little bit more. My back rise was lengthened an inch and a half. So I know that these are going to sit a little higher than where they were on my muslin, which is a good thing. 
I felt like it, they were a little low, you know, it was a little, and that does seem like a lot of people feel that way. It's the only thing I've seen people write about. So I'm gonna go across the top. Um, I really want my pants to be all up here so it's not pulling on me. And because there's a notch in these, it's starting to fray. I'm gonna kind of tuck it down. I don't like the phrase to poke out of my back pocket. I just pin it right in the middle of the pocket so I can walk, uh, sew around it. Okay, that was three stitches, so I just wanna remember that. I need to get rid of a few things over here. Where's my cherry pie? I don't see it anywhere. I feel like I ask that a lot too, don't I? You're anxious. Oh, you you got it, Carol. Do you have extra fabric? Oh, yeah. Edge stitch fit's a good idea. I don't have one of those for this machine. But you might have one in your um, kit for your home machine that you don't even know you have. <clears throat> but if you have extra pockets, you could practice. Why not? You know? I think that's a good idea. Oh, the point lines up. Imagine that. <laughs> I wonder if that's by design. It's only now by design because it did, it happened. <laughs> if it wasn't, I would just be like, oh yeah, it's not supposed to. <laughs> I'm trying to get keep that point. So I'm just being careful how I fold it. So your fabric may uh, ruffle a little bit when you're going through this much thickness and because of the stretch. It will calm down once you're done sewing and they've been washed and worn. Plus remember they're gonna stretch a little on you so don't, don't fret about it too much. And you might not see that with your machine. My presser foot pressure is quite uh, significant, the pressure that um, pushes on my presser foot because um, of the other work I sew on this. Does the need, does your needle position move <clears throat> on your machine? No, it does not. Oh, you guys have written a lot of stuff. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you can, but ironing your, I mean, a lot of people make pocket template and they iron around it. That's fine. Until the curve of the fly. Yeah, I know those are, you can make your own template for that though. Yeah, Lisa, that's, I used to do that too. That's so smart. I forgot about that. Like lining up, you, you like move your needle where you want it rather than moving everything else. It And mine does not. Mine only does, um, mine's a, mine is considered a, what's called a single needle machine. Um, and I feel like that's a misleading term because it, it, it leads you to imply like other machines are more than one needle. Um, and there are plenty of machines that are more than one needle, but um, not in a straight stitch world. I don't really know why they say that. I've never gotten to the bottom of that. Maybe I'll try and remember to ask my mechanic. He's really amazing. Um, it just means that my machine does not have a zigzag or anything but forward and backward, and that is it. So my home machine, I can change the needle position, I think. Yeah, 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 of course I can, because I have a zigzag on it. Um, one, two, three. But this one, no, I don't have that luxury. So the seam allowance is wanting to push my needle a little bit, get me off track. But I'm saying, no, I'm the boss here. You're not gonna let me do that. I'm just gonna look to see if my, um, I want my pivot to be right above where I pivoted down there. It's really hard, it's like uh, deceptive when you're looking at it from the front. And this one I can do one more. Proof that uh, sewing on an industrial machine is doesn't it doesn't get away from you. You can do one stitch at a time. Where is my cherry slice? Oh, it's behind the light. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. Oh, sorry about your tail, dude. Yeah, it's a little annoying that the tail got caught. <laughs> I 
I, I, I think it does look a little childish. I think I'm gonna leave it though. It's cute. All right, where's my other pocket? <clears throat> Rip, it's on the ground. <laughs> now it's covered. Does it look like a, a Boeing? All right, let me hem it. If I definitely, I put the, you know, a moon or a lazy dog. Wait, yeah, that's what it is. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Yeah, 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 okay. It's an orange fox. Okay. I'm going to look at where I stitched this one. Stay up there. Don't go on the floor. It's hot lava. The, because of the stretch of the denim, it wants to not be a nice crisp fold. So I, I do think like um, ironing it's a good idea. But just note that because it might get a little like, like you might get a little like hump, you know? Right, exactly, Lisa. It's the white tip, of course. Perfect, Melin. I love that way of thinking. Okay. What do you think, Nancy? Do you think it's too juvenile? Because um, I know you brought that up, and I think you're right. Okay. So, let's see. So, boing. I'm not sure this will look like a hill when this is the same stitch, you know? Unless I, I could fill in another... Ironing really helps, absolutely. <laughs> this is my last thing, and then we're done for the day. Oh no, I lost my pin. <laughs> Bummer. I, I love that. Seeing that, Christy, it's like, the ironing really helps. I'm like, is that a hint? Should I iron this? <laughs> This looks familiar to me, like the, the stitching and stuff. It looks very, um, I can't, I can't think of what it is. But if you guys have ever seen um, this gal on Instagram, her Instagram is Zeriano, Z-E-R-I-A-N-O. It is, her, she draws with her, her machine. It's amazing. It's really cute. All right, Nancy. <laughs> we'll see. You know, I'll, maybe I'll chalk it up to how many people call me Foxy. <laughs> Just kidding. I, I would be blushing bright red if that happened a lot. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. I'm going to use my other pocket for my placement. I feel like that's more important than using the original lines. Oh, you know what? I'm not attaching it yet. I need to figure out my stitching. All right. I'm going to do this. What if I did a straight line? <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna try this stitching and see what, what it looks like. There's my hill, and then here's my boing. Wouldn't it be a drag to run out of bobbin thread right now? All right. What do you guys think? He's like, hello, Kirby. <laughs> How's it going? Kirby just sewed her first vinyl bag for her Disney ears. Turned out really cute. Who's that foxy lady? I don't really hear that at knitting shows. I don't hear that ever, honestly. But, you know. <laughs> I am with my best gal pals at a show, though. And they, you know, they, they're they nice. <laughs> okay, what do you guys think? Does it look like he went boing? 
What if I did this in a different color? You like it, Kirby? Kirby actually texted me. I really liked your stop motion. It was pretty good. Maybe make the hill double. You know, okay, that's what I originally was going to do, like a little curve here. But what if I just did them out of a different color? That's too much, huh? Because I have like orange. Let's just try... Uh, try. Don't really like that. I have a start stop right there, but what are you going to do? And then remember, it'll have the double stitching on it. That actually does help, huh? I'm not sure the hills are there. Oh gosh, Nancy, I feel you. My mom's five one. <laughs> yeah, I know, Christy, right? I don't want to have to explain it. Why well, can't have a fox chasing a bunny, Kirby? <laughs> it, yeah, the two hills makes it more balanced, right? Okay, let's attach it. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to use my other pocket as a um, guide for placement since I lost one pin and I already have that one sewn on there and I want them to be symmetrical. Um, and I'm going to line it up by these edges rather than folding it on here because it's really hard to fold on your center seam when it's been top stitch. It might kind of do a funky thing. <clears throat> you don't like the second hill, Kirby? I'm thinking with the double stitching, it's going to help. All right, so I'm going to do it from upside down here like this. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. <laughs> no bunny, huh? <laughs> no fox after the bunny. <laughs> yeah, it looks kind of like not a Boeing right now to me. I mean, I could fill this in or put grass. This is getting a little out of control. Uh, just a double line on the, the top, on this one, I mean. What if I just put like a little bit of like grass on this little hill so it looks like a hill? That might actually be okay. Here, I'm gonna mark my pocket with chalk on the um, pants so when I pull it off, it's not so hard to place back. Yeah, I'm not too keen on this little second one. Like, I like the idea of that, but I think because my Boeing doesn't, it's like a, not a different stitch and it's not a different color, it doesn't do justice to the hills, you know? <laughs> Add grass, yeah. Yeah, Melin, I saw it. Oh, that's what you admit, Melin, not a second hill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I interpreted that wrong. Okay, yeah, okay. What would I do without you guys? All right. My actually, yeah, I've been trying to move the camera so my hands are <laughs> actually under it, you know? I went to this uh, sewing club this week. Um, it's the start of a sewing club at my local fabric store. It was really fun. It had such an amazing turnout. It was really exciting. Not quite sure what we're going to be doing or what I'll be doing in there. I have pledged to get better at invisible zippers using my industrial machine because I've definitely been kind of faking it using my industrial machine for invisible zippers. 
All right, so what do we think, like, like that? Maybe I should uh, applique a, um, This is looking kind of Gloria Vanderbilt 80s to me. And I don't even know why, because I'm not very good at my brands and, and logos. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it like this. And if I add anything, I'll add it by hand. Yeah, the foot doesn't work on my machine, Michelle. That's why I've been faking it. And I've already had to replace a couple. All right, I think I'm going to leave it right there. And if I add anything else, I will do it by the dreaded hand. <laughs> I know, big fat baby when it comes to hand sewing. Just know <laughs> Kathleen. <laughs> yeah, it is a little close to Easter for that. I could maybe add, you know, where's the little... These things are so tiny, I, I'm losing them. Well, I was gonna say, I could put, you know, like his little buddies waiting for him over here. <laughs> like the sitting one, you know? It's probably on me somewhere. All right, let's get our last pocket on here and then we'll get to our other project. So how many of you are still in process sewing these, if any of you are? I know a few of you have finished. So next week I will put on the um, waistband and I will probably have to break out my either my serger or my home machine one or the other to do the final bit on the waistband that was too far away I could tell one two one two three <laughs> Oh, this one's not lining up on there as well. Okay, let's see. Let's see if I can get it back over there. See, it's starting, it was trying to relax the little fold right there. Oh, you do, Kirby? That's cool. I know, Nancy, right? You just couldn't stop. Okay, cool, Lisa. So you're right about where I'm at. Well, um, like someone mentioned, um, Closet Case Patterns has a, uh, like a little downloadable booklet on pocket stitch designs. Oh, really, Ida? That's interesting. You're going to go for that idea then? I think that's awesome. Yeah, I think you'd have to pop open the side seam of the waistband and then um, do it there. Just making sure that's straight. I'm going to fold down my little corner here. Just so that that little, um, where I notched it, the frayed edges don't poke out of my pocket because it's a pet peeve. What you can't see is that the stitching of that little hill kind of left a scar on my fabric. And I'm hoping it goes away with a washing. I don't think you can see it. You might be able to. Yeah, that's 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 great, Nancy. I, I wanted to look at that and then I've just been so busy. I was like, ah, you know, it's so nice not having the Thursday stream so I can get more sewn during the week. And then I added the, the, the Thea Rochelle, and I was like, oh, shoot, now I'm spending all this time preparing another thing. And I'd already prepped everything for this. That's me, though. I'm like, oh, look at all this free time. Let me add 10 more things, you know. 
But what's interesting is I'm really getting down there on the amount of sewing left for chicken boots forever and ever. So it, it kind of is a motivating factor. What do you guys think? Oh, cool, you're making the Jenny overalls? Yeah, exactly. It gets a little bulky when you pre-surge, but it is nice when you just can go to the machine and not leave, huh? The um, Morgan jeans, um, they have the button fly, right, Nancy? And that was in your needle sharp box, right? Because um, I don't, I don't think I have those, but I'm gonna, I might have them. I might have bought them because I knew you were gonna do them. I might try those um, in the near future. I'm gonna be behind two boxes by the time I'm streaming again, probably, because um, I've got my um, jeans out there and then the robe box is coming. I was kind of glad there's a shipping delay because of the weather. I know a lot of people aren't. And then um, and then I'll, there'll probably be another one after that, right? Oh, the skirt. So I'll have like three boxes I'll have to keep up on. And I really want to do some seam work patterns too. So there's a lot to sew. Yeah, button fly. I don't know. I, Nancy, I really think these are a great intro. And you know, there's, um, I would look for a fly tutorial on those Morgans, but I'll, I'll check them out. Hopefully by the time you're sewing them, real jeans have their own set of issues. Quote of the day. <laughs> All right, Christy, see you later. <laughs> um, I like that. These aren't real jeans. <laughs> they kind of aren't. <laughs> All right. What do you guys think? I like them. Maybe I'll put them up to me and see what I think in the mirror. <laughs> you skipped the skirt, right? Yeah, the Robux didn't ship yet because she's um, snowed in. They're all snowed in back there. So, all right, you guys. Um, all right, well, this was part two of the sewing. I think this the stream thumbnail is labeled as number three because we did a Q&A before we started uh, the whole sew along. Um, and next we're going to do the uh, waistband because it's pull on and then the side seams and the inseam and the hems and I'm done. Uh, Carol, I really want to do that jean jacket. And then thanks Fiona. <laughs> Okay, good. I'm like reading all your comments. They're like coming in really quick. Um, so um, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so we'll do that. I'll get to finish them. And I don't know what else I was saying. <laughs> um, but I'm going to end now and then I'll be back probably like at 1245. Hi, Raquel. Thank you. Um, and um, I'm going to do the... Um, do, 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 do. The Thea Rochelle Raglan, which I really, I kind of like this uh, sizing of this because I don't know if you can see that. Oh, 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 oh. There. You can see I'm making this small. I'm not typically a small, but the, um, the finished bust is, is that right? Yeah, 47. 47 inches. My best is like a 37, I think, something like that, 38. But um, it goes up to a finished bust of 59. The sleeves are fitted, so it's not um, too frumpy looking. And I'm kind of hoping to wear this with leggings or something. Thanks, Kathleen. And um, I'm kind of doing some fun stuff. I'm doing a cutaway pocket, which is not shown here, right here. A little cutaway pocket with some contrast fabric behind it knit sleeves, which is not called for, and breaking the rules, and a back pleat. So it should be fun. It's all cut out and ready to go. I just need to rearrange my stream a little bit, have a snack, and I'll be back. And so I'm really glad you guys are here. These are coming along so great. I'm so jealous of all of you who finished them. Ah, thanks, Kathleen. Well, I, I like it. I'm really hoping that this continues on because I'm all in right now. <laughs> I'm setting up a whole new space and, you know, winding down chicken boots and I'm really having a great time. So this is really what I've been craving is hanging out with other sewers and just trying to make everybody just try, you know, just try it out. 
I feel like my quote of the week is instead of saying, um, what if I fail? What if you just change that word to what if I try? You know, because I think that that's the kind of the crux of it. What if you just try it out? See what happens. You never know. You might turn out just fine. Or you might be like, oh, okay, I, I got this. I know what to do now differently. So what if I try? So that's how I feel about the stream. What if I just try out the stream and see if there's other people that are craving this kind of experience as well? So thanks for coming. And um, for those of you who can come for the second stream, I will see you soon. Awesome, Lisa. Thanks, Fiona. You guys are awesome. I tell people I have the nicest and sweetest chat. They're warm and welcoming and friendly and funny and gentle. So please come and chat and hang out with us. So, all right, guys, I'll see you at like 20 minutes, maybe a little bit earlier. And then um, we'll sew the Thea Rochelle. I may go a little fast because I know it's a second stream and I know people can't be here forever. I am inspiring. What are you talking about? I'm really, I'm just so impressed. So many people are trying out really like daunting garments to them, you know, like they might not think it's daunting two years from now, but right now it is. And you're still trying it. That's really inspiring to me. So, cause I remember when I was just like, I don't want to sew that looks hard. <laughs> now there's certain things I'm like, I don't want to sew that. I know that's hard and I don't want to do it. <laughs> now I'm just like, Ugh. but you know, pretty much anything we wear, I think I can do invisible zippers. That's my goal this year. I've done a lot of them. I don't really like how they turn out. So, all right, I'll see you guys at uh, 1245 and um, bye. Have a great weekend if I don't see you. And then I'll see you next Saturday for part three or the final part of the sewing of these. And um, have a great weekend, okay? See you soon. Where's my mouse? There it is. <laughs>